In this demo, I'm going to run the weather research and forecasting model, WARF, in Google Batch with MPI. I'm going to show how to use the HPC toolkit to quickly and easily prepare an environment for running batch jobs. To start, I've loaded the cloud console and checked out the Google HPC toolkit from GitHub and built the GHPC tool. I'm going to run it against this batch-mpi YAML file to create the plan for the environment that I want for the batch jobs I'm going to run. So let's start with that command. So it comes back pretty quickly. To actually put that plan into action, I have to run these Terraform commands. Before I do, I just want to walk through the batch MPI YAML file real quickly to describe some of the objects that are in that file that describe the environment I'm going to use. So the main thing to point out is this sharefs uh, object. That's a file store. Everything inside is going to be on a shared file store. So when I run batch jobs, my nodes for the batch jobs will mount that file store. Uh, I'm going to have a login node where I can run some sanity checks, and that's going to have the same file store loaded. The file store is going to be where WARF is installed and where I have my input files and where actually my output files from the batch jobs will end up too. So everything inside ends up there. That's my shared file system. This SPAC object describes the whole process for installing WARF with Intel MPI and compiling it and all that. Uh, it's pretty involved and it's possible to do this all manually, but this is one of the benefits of the toolkit is we can have this fixed description of the software and where it needs to go and it'll get the same results every time. So this is just describing the whole process for getting WARF onto that file store. This SPAC build startup object and the next one down here, SPAC builder describes a temporary VM that's going to come up and execute the process of installing WARF. So the VM comes up, it runs that startup script, it installs WARF on the file store and gets the inputs and everything um, and then shuts down. So it's kind of a temporary VM just to, to do that whole install process. And then the last uh, few, few objects are describing my login node. The login node is going to be really similar to the nodes of the batch jobs I'll eventually run. It's going to mount the same file store, it's going to have the same environment, and uh, it's just a great place to do sanity checks, and it's, it's very useful to have that kind of an object um, instead of just having a completely separate workstation that's, that has nothing to do with the nodes of your batch jobs. Um, so that's what these last few objects are about. And now if I run those Terraform commands, that will actually cause that environment to come into being. It'll take just a minute here. And then it's going to ask me, you know, here's what I want to do. Type yes to continue. Okay, so it said all these things. Now I'm going to type yes to continue. And that'll go ahead and work. It comes back right away, but it is actually some work that has to happen. So um, this is saying, well, later you'll be able to go into your login node. But in reality, there's this back builder temporary VM and that's going to come up and it's going to do a bunch of work. And that takes a little while because it takes a little while to build WARF. Um, but luckily I did this earlier. So I'm just going to pop over to my login node from the last time and we'll continue from there. Okay, so here I am SSH into my login node. Like I said, this is similar to the nodes that uh, my batch jobs will eventually use. And I'm just going to use this node to run a couple of quick sanity checks and then, uh, will run some batch jobs. So the first thing that's similar about this this machine is I have my file store already mounted at slash share and I've got some inputs and things uh, in in slash share. So under warp v3 I've got these two benchmarks. Um, the bench the 12 kilometer benchmark is a, a smaller benchmark that I can run right on this machine. So that's what I'm going to do next. Uh, and the setup is a little bit funny but it's just the way warp is. So I'm going to make a directory to do my sanity check-in, and then I'm going to copy the contents of that uh, share warp v3 12 kilometer benchmark to this directory. And then I need, uh, warp is kind of funny, to do, to run warp I need a bunch of files to sort of exist in the directory that I'm running warp from. So I'm going to grab 
I'm going to make uh, sim, sim links to those files right here. And this, this is expected error, this nameless input that already existed from the benchmark itself. It exists in the WARF environment and in the benchmark directory, and we kind of want the one from the benchmark directory, so that's okay. Anyway, now our directory looks like this. There's a whole bunch of files. Um, it's not super important. Uh, that's just This is just the WARF setup. Um, I'm going to run WARF now on just this machine, not in a batch job. And uh, I'm going to still run it with MPI. I just want to see kind of everything running just on the one node and make sure everything's uh, sane. So I'm going to do uh, LSCPU to see how many cores I've got. I've got 60 cores, but I know that um, that it's it's two virtual cores per physical core, so I really only have 30 physical cores. So when I run this, I'm going to run with MPI run uh, minus MP30 for 30 MPI ranks. And... Uh, We'll just let it go, and and this is how WARF works. So I've copied all of my inputs to this to the working directory. There's no, uh, it, you you don't pass your your benchmark files to to WARF with with uh, uh, command line options like like most programs. So we'll just let this go, and it'll come up. It'll it'll take maybe a minute and a half um, to run with with uh, thirty ranks like this. It. Uh, the fact that it hasn't already crashed and complained that it's missing something or it can't run warp for whatever reason um, or can't find some input it needs is already a pretty good indication that it's working, that the environment is okay. And so I'd be okay now just going and um, running batch jobs, but uh, I'll give it a minute to uh, see if, just make sure that we get a correct output. We can check the, the output at the end. And uh, if everything looks healthy, then we can move right on to running batch jobs, and it's from here. It's not not too complicated. All right, now the sanity check is finished, and if we look at our directory now, it's well, it's hard to tell the difference, but there's a new file. Um, the uh, the the warf d01 2001 uh, output here that wasn't there before. And we can also sort of check, uh, an, an easy way to check that, that nothing too terrible happened uh, and it all kind of worked is to just look at the end of the um, one of the output files. There's, there's these RSL error files and RSL out files and there's one for each MPI rank. Um, but if you look at the, the rank zero one, usually there'll be, you know, this is what I'm looking for. Success, complete warp. So the whole thing worked and, and, and it took about a minute and a half of wall time. Um, and, and that's kind of all I wanted to see in terms of in terms of the sanity check. So now we can move on to actually running batch jobs. So now I'm ready to uh, create some batch jobs. And one of the things that the toolkit created for me uh, is a, a template for a batch job that uh, I can just edit to get started. It's, it's easier than writing the entire batch job configuration by hand. So let's just get into that real quick. Um, the, the template, the, this, this batch job is, uh, a little bit special because most batch jobs, uh, just spawn a bunch of tasks and none of the tasks care what any of the other tasks are doing. In this case, uh, it's important that, that the tasks are synchronized. So what's really going to happen is, uh, a bunch of tasks are going to be created, one task per machine, and when all the machines are ready, one of the machines is going to call MPI run and start creating MPI processes on, on everyone. And what this first barrier object does is it says, no machine will advance to the second place, this script, until all the machines have gotten to that barrier. It means that all the machines will be ready uh, and, and active by the time anything invokes this submit war v3 script. And then the second barrier means none of the tasks will advance to a, to a succeeded to a finished state until all the machines have gotten to this point, meaning that all the machines have to have finished this submit war v3 script. And we're going to get to that script in a minute. Um, this volumes bit was provided in the template by the toolkit, and it's just enough to, to mount that file store, uh, which is just really nice. I don't have to go and and dig through um, the, the cloud UI and, and find the IP address of 
of my file store or any anything like that. It's just it's just there for me. That saves me some time. Um, I'm going to change the task count here. Uh, the task count because I'm using one node, one count, a task count of one per node. The task count is really the node count, and I'm going to run a slightly larger benchmark. So uh, I'm going to actually use a uh, a more nodes than two. Uh, we'll do maybe we'll do 16 nodes. Um, and then these configurations require host file and permissive SSH uh, are useful for MPI. This means that batch will configure the worker nodes of the job to give MPI access to a list of all the machines in the job and all the machines will be able to SSH to one another without a password and, and this just allows them to all communicate. So MPI run can do what it needs to do. Um, the allocation policy is using this instance template. The instance template is is helpful because it's pointing to a um, Google Google HPC image, which is uh, pre-tuned for that for some uh, performance improvements for for HPC. So we'll get slightly better improvement, uh, better performance with that uh, template than we would with just a a default standard standard machine. Um, and then the logs policy means that we're going to log any logs we produce will end up in cloud logging. And if, if something goes wrong, that'll be useful for debugging. But all I wanted to change in here was the, uh, the task count. And then we can move on to this. The, the real meat of everything is this, this submit war v3 script. So we'll go to that next. Okay, so in this script, um, the the important bit to notice is this if batch task index equals zero. So all the machines will run this script, but the only one machine, the one that has batch task index zero, will will go into this this business here, um, where it actually uh, invokes MPI run to run the WARF simulation. Um, it, it it actually follows a process similar to the one I did for the sanity check. It makes a directory, a unique directory for the this particular job. Um, it copies a benchmark into into that directory. I've changed this already to use the two point five kilometer benchmark. It's a it's a much larger benchmark because I thought it'd be more fun to run a large benchmark with a batch job. Um, and then it does the same thing. It it links a bunch of files in, and then it invokes MPI run, and then. Uh, the only thing that I want to change here, this batch host file uh, is, is a file that just lists all of the machines in the job. So that that's, means that we can spread MPI ranks across all those. And I changed it to um, from two tasks to 16 tasks. So it was previously 30 physical cores uh, times two, two machines, so 60 ranks. And now it'll be 480. Um, MPI ranks that we want. And then other than that, that should be ready to go. And okay, so uh, now we're ready to run a batch job. So I'm going to use gcloud batch job submit and give it a name uh, warp test demo I'm going to say I want everything in sight to be in the US Central One region and then point at my config file. Home batch jobs cloud. This config file that we were just editing. And that should just go. Okay. So that job has been submitted. Um, it's not it's not running yet, it's just submitted. Um, and now we can watch it. So usually the way I like to do this is uh, with the watch command. It's just, it's easier than typing um, bash job describe over and over again or polluting the, the bash history with a bunch of that. Um, and we just want to describe this job right here. And that should give us a little self-updating. Um, so every two seconds this screen will just update and it's going to show us It'll take a couple of minutes for the machines to, to come online, and then it'll take 20 or so minutes for um, for this benchmark to run. 
Uh, but basically we're off and running. And what's kind of neat about this is because of the way the environment is set up and because the uh, job template that the toolkit provided is going to create a new output directory for every job, the jobs won't step on each other. I can create, you know, if I wanted to say, well, maybe 16 nodes wasn't the right number of nodes. Maybe I should try eight nodes or four nodes or something. Um, I could just keep submitting new batch jobs. Or if I wanted to change the the inputs of the parameters of the actual simulation, I could submit new batch jobs. And I'll just keep getting new new output directories in, um, in the share jobs folder. And uh, it's just... It's it's now I'm now I'm in an environment where it's very easy to submit um, these new these new jobs. Uh, like I said, this this one is going to take a little while. It's a bigger job. Uh, it'll take it'll take one or two minutes to go from the scheduled state to the running state, and then after that, it'll take twenty or so minutes to to actually perform the simulation. Um, but luckily, I I did this earlier, so I I have the output, and I can. Um, I can show that next in a in a nice visualizer. So now I've switched over to IDV and I'm going to plot the results of that last big batch job, the 2.5 kilometer one. So I downloaded the final output of that. I called it final that out. We're going to read it as aggregate wharf data. And there's actually a lot of fields that we could plot. I'm going to choose one that's kind of easy to understand, which is temperature. And there it is. I'm going to change the color scheme here a little bit. The default color scheme is just too too wide, um, but we can actually change this to be based on what's in the data we're trying to plot, and that just makes it a little easier to look at. And um, this static image is the state of the simulation <clears throat> at the beginning of the simulation at uh, 9 o'clock or so, and over the course of the batch job, 10 uh, frames were recorded where we have kind of a snapshot of the state of everything. So it's possible to now animate through for the three hours of simulated time and uh, see the weather system changing from about nine o'clock to midnight. So that's it. That was creating an environment for running batch jobs using the HPC toolkit and running a sanity check on our login node and then a much larger simulation with MPI in a batch job. And this is the payoff that we get to have this nice visualization of a weather system uh, at the end of it after about, with uh, with the 16 nodes that we tried, it was, it was about a 25 minute simulation. Thank you.